Hey, hey, everybody. Uh, that's right, man. Welcome back to the Bow Fishing Buzz, episode 78, presented by AMS Bow Fishing and Mega Mouth Bow Fishing as well. Brought to you by Efficiency Bow Fishing Lights and And Designs Leather. Woo! All right, Schmitty, welcome back. Uh, of course, my name is Matthew, and I'm here with my good buddy, D. Schmitty. D. Schmitty. Yep, I'm pretty sure that everyone who listens to this podcast doesn't even know my real first name. That's they don't even... amazing. A lot of people don't even know what you look like. No, that's true. Until they, just, they hear your voice. You'll yep. be standing backwards, and they'll hear your voice. Yeah, I'll hear. I'll, be, I, I'll get calls. <laughs> yeah, I'll get calls right. in the office. Right. And, uh, you know, I'll... Hey there, Tyler. This is Derek from AMS Boat Fishing. Just wondering about that order that you placed there. And uh, and all of a sudden, he'll go, wait. <laughs> yep. Are yep. you Schmitty? I said, well, yes, I am. Mm-hmm. I recognize your voice from the podcast. And that warms yep. my heart yep. when I hear that. I love Be it. Schmitty. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, we oh, have boy. a special guest again yes, we this do. week. Yep. Um, Joe Nichols. Joe Nichols. Now, Joe has been in the boat fishing world for a long time. He has. Yes, he yes. has. Yep. He hosts a lot of tournaments. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason that I wanted to bring Joe on today, because he was one of the, he lived in the area where the big heads first started to show up. Okay, gotcha. And I want to hear what it was like when he first saw oh, God. his big heads. Sure. When he first started to shoot those big heads and how they hunted him, how they learned yeah. how to hunt them a little bit. Because they're totally different than Absolutely. everything else. That's a totally different ball game. Absolutely, because that area where they were shooting those big heads on the Ohio River actually got the nickname called Land of the Giants. Land of the Giants. What an amazing name. Yes, I can remember Jason Greer and Mel Greer and Joe Nichols and um, some other people out there shooting those fish, and they were just absolute giants. Big old toads out there. Huge. Yeah. You know, 60, 70 pounds. Mm. Just mm. tankers out there. Yeah, those fish are not as common as they want. So I work. really want to hear Joe's story about, sure. you know, how they all first found out about them. Yeah, uh, right. Did they just happen to be out one night and accidentally run into them, which right. I'm guessing is what happens. Right, right. You know? Yeah, what's going through your head when you look over and you see a 60-pound? You've been shooting commons right. all night or buffs, whatever you're doing. All right. of a sudden, you look out the backside of the boat, and there's this huge fish at the surface. That's got to be wild. Along with that, Schmitty, is were they running their big lights on? Right. Or right. what were they doing? Yeah. Yeah, you know, had to be a learning curve. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what he says about yeah, that. So, that's so it'll be kind of cool to have Joe talk about that yeah. a little bit. Um, yeah. You've also got some bad news Uh-oh. for the March Madness. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't even get me started on that. Last night was the championship game. UConn beat Purdue, Yeah, which UConn, just talk about a dominant year. Yes, oh, my were. gosh. That's just, they win by 15. They've won yeah. every every tournament game. They won by double digits. They trailed for, like, a total of, like, 30 seconds or something. Yeah. I mean, just wild. Yeah, they had the largest margin of win in sure. NCAA history. Yeah, that's just crazy. That's yeah. just crazy. And uh, as many of you guys who have called the shop or called us for to place an order or have any questions or anything, you guys have probably talked to Wendy, and Wendy's husband, Keith, ended up winning the yep. entire thing. He yep. won the AMS... Uh, March Madness bracket, and Wendy took third. So they were just right. raking in the dough. Yep. They each picked UConn to win. So yep. Arizona didn't quite hold up there into the yeah, bargain. For I was me. out of it yeah. uh, in the Sweet 16. Yeah, was, we <laughs> both lost our Houston. You had Houston, I had Arizona, and we got we got duped. We got in booted Sweet out 16. right away. Yeah. Yeah, we got yep. booted out right away. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's such a hard thing to – I think sometimes, you know, UConn obviously was the, the consensus pick, but so many years that best team is not the team that ends up winning it all. Yeah. It's a team that gets hot. Like NC State, you know, they were an 11 seed, and they roll their way into the Final Four. That's just right. ridiculous. Right. But it is what it is, March Madness. I like your idea of May Mayhem a little bit more. <laughs> we should look into that a little, a little bit, bit of more. AMS May yeah, Mayhem. we should look into that. Yeah. Uh, so now we're going to move into a little bit of bow fishing news here, Schmidt. Yeah. Um, yeah. This Saturday is a Spawnathon Big 20 at the Barkley Dam Pavilion. Registration is at 7 a.m., 7.45 p.m., or a.m., actually. It's a it's a a.m., it's a daytime tournament. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yep. That's cool. That's very so cool. So 7.45 a.m. is a captain's meeting, and then I'm guessing you go out, and Wayne is at 7 p.m. I was actually curious. I saw a.m. on here, registration. I'm like, is that supposed to be p.m.? That yeah, seems late a, for p.m., but it's tournament. a daytime shoot. Yeah. That's cool. Yep, yep. Uh, the Bass Pro U.S. Open tournament is coming up here at the end of the month, April 27th in Gonzales, Louisiana. Yep. Um, I will be down I was gonna there. Say, you'll be yep, there. I'll be down there uh, with the AMS and Megamoth booth. Yep. Uh, so come by and let me know how things are going for you. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to hear yeah. how your scouting's been going and yep. what you think and everything like that. And Matt's not shooting in a tournament, so you won't be, you know, giving him any intel about no, anything. No, no. 
Um, for the last couple of weeks here, the Bow Fishing Association of America has put on a membership uh, drive, and um, they wanted to see if it would help get more members yeah, to sign up. Absolutely, and it's um, a hard thing to do. And what they had was they were giving away a dead wake um, infusion XL bow. Yeah, and um, I believe I read Christina say that. It, they had 160. I was just going to ask you how many people did that. Like 160. Oh, that's huge. Paid members. That's huge. Yeah, that's awesome. That got in there, and the winner of the bowl was Jeremiah Weber. So congratulations to him. Nice. That's a really Very neat nice. deal. And that yeah. just goes to show, you know. That's, that's a cool deal for oh, them absolutely. to do that absolutely. membership drive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's very cool. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this in here, Matt, before you continue, just for everybody listening, in case you haven't done that, we're not doing a membership drive, but one thing we are doing for the Mega Mouth yep. is uh, we're giving away a Mega Mouth reel right you now. You are, yeah. Um, totally free to, to sign up. All you've got to do is you'll find the, the, the link on our social media accounts, on our Facebook page. All you've got to do is follow that link and put in your email. All right, you put that email in there, boom, you are signed up to win right. a reel. And what that putting your email in there is going to automatically enroll you in our e blast list, which I'm making two or three of those a week. You're going to get exclusive discount codes and yep. deals and specials on blowout products, or if we have a, a 25% off accessories going on, we try to keep right. that to an exclusive. You know, we want to make you, if you're part of that e blast, we want to make it worth your while to be yeah. there. So we're not always offering these deals to the general public. So you'll you'll be signed up to win a free reel. And you'll be signed up to get exclusive offers. So we picked the winner April 22nd, so make sure you sign up to win a free Mega Mouth. Awesome. I thought I'd throw that in there. Heck so. of a prize to win, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And another cool thing about those e-blasts, Derek, is they'll let you know when there's a podcast. Yes, out. absolutely. They'll carbon TV, carbon episodes. TV episodes. Yep. 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 So that's a neat, really neat little thing to, to get notifications on. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, April 22nd is the last day that you can pre-register for the AMS Big 20 to get your free T-shirts. Yep. yep. For the yep. whole team, the AMS Big 20 T-shirts. Yep. Um, now, of course, you can still pre-register up until May 18th at 10 a.m. Right. right. Um, but April 22nd is the cutoff to get your free T-shirt for the AMS Big 20 this year. Yeah, just because we got to place that order for those T-shirts to get them here on time for the tournament. Right. So that's yes. the reason for that cutoff. That's We're not just cutoff. wanting to penalize you guys and not let you yep. do it, but we got to get that order in to get those T-shirts here for right. you. So. And, and we'll, or, we'll order some extra ones in case you want to buy them, but we don't order a lot because, you know, we don't want to spend the money on 2024 T-shirts right. that say the date on them and then have a bunch left over next year yep. and, and so on. So, yep. so we'll yep. order limited supplies of that that you can buy at yeah. the the tournament on that day yeah for mm -hmm. sure so uh uh matt i tell you what now it is time for did you feel the tension in the air right now it's time for b a a records and we've only got one on this podcast yeah all right so this week. Congratulations to Trip Grunwald on his BAA Oklahoma State Youth Record and Youth World Record Spoonbill Paddlefish, weighing 55.8 pounds. What a toad that is. Way to go, Trip. That is, that is awesome. That's cool. That, those that's youth cool. records, I, I love seeing the records, but seeing that, seeing that youth word in there is always like, oh, yeah. heck yeah. That's a memory that kid's going to remember forever. Absolutely. And not only did he get the, the BAA Youth Oklahoma Record, man, he got the Youth World yeah. record. You got the whole kit and caboodle wow. there. Yeah, that's very cool. That's wow. Very cool. So nice shooting to trip. Yep. Very cool. Yep. Very cool. So um, before we move into, yeah. we're going to talk a little bit here about Vegas. Before we yeah. move into that, um, I just wanted to mention this again. You know, once again, we, we lost another bow fisher here. Oh, yeah. That's right. in the last week here down in uh, Alabama and Gunnersville. Mm -hmm. um, so, man, just you know, be careful out there, guys, yeah. gals. Yeah. Be careful out there, you know. I'll never forget... Looking back to when I first started bow fishing, I'll never forget the first time where I was on a big river, unfamiliar water, mm -hmm. and um, I was driving up river, and even though I had my lights on, it was like I was going into a dark hole. Sure, yeah. You, you it was it was a dark night. You you know there was no moon out, so you couldn't see the trees, you couldn't see the shoreline or nothing, and it was just so weird to me. Yeah, eerie, eerie feeling. It, it was a very eerie feeling. Now, of course, throughout the years, you get used to that mm -hmm. because you see that quite often. But I'll never forget the first couple of times I went out in unfamiliar waters. I was like, even though you're looking, and and back then we didn't have a lot of the the amazing you know mappings and right. chart plotters that we can follow nowadays. Right. I can remember I was holding on to an old handheld. Oh my gosh! Um, uh, yeah, like a GPS system like a type GPS of deal. GPS system. Yep. That was kind of really basic. basic. Yeah. You know. Yep. 
And I remember I'm like, okay, the river starts making a bend up here, you know, to the left, you know, I hope that's true. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because it's just like driving into a big black hole. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, man, just, you know, sometimes we just got to slow down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Slow down and take our time, but man, just be careful out there, everybody. I know the season's starting. We're all wanting to get out there and get out there and enjoy the sport of bowfishing so much, but man, just be careful out yeah. there and, and, you know, hearts off to the hearts, you know, to the people that we lost here so yeah. far this year. It's, right. it's just, we, we can't have that. We no. don't need that. No, no. Yeah. Yep. Just be safe. Yeah. Like you said, with, especially with the season kicking off here, tournaments are starting back up, you know, right. guys are going to be moving around in the water at night. So just take that extra second, be cautious and uh, yeah. let's try to avoid anything else happening. happening Where are your this PFDs? Year. Yep. Yep. It's another thing. Where are your PFDs? Yep. For yeah. sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, with uh, with Joe coming on and just kind of yep. what you prefaced earlier, Matt, with that that information about you know the, the, what he might be able to tell us about what it was like back when big heads were not right. the craze that they are now. Right. Um, we're just going to do a little bit of an in depth dive into big heads. A if, bit, if yeah. our if our listeners aren't super familiar with them, you know, there's not not many big heads up here in Wisconsin. Right. We're not going out shooting big heads every weekend right. or, or targeting them at least. So uh, we're just going to do a little bit of a breakdown of mm-hmm. the big head. Yep. So big head carp are native to Eastern Asia and are one of four non-native fish referred to as invasive carp. These fish are large, deep-bodied fish that have a large head and a large toothless mouth with a protruding lower jaw. And I'll never forget this, Matt. The first trip I went down <laughs> to Kentucky with you, and we were we were chasing after these big heads. First off, you were telling me how we were going to be going after them, and I'm like, what? This seems crazy. But I remember you always said they're shaped like a nail. Oh, they kind of yeah, have a yeah. body shape of a nail. It's so big up top, and then they kind of just narrow <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah. Right down yep. to a point almost like. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, the big head carp's eyes are far forward and low on the head, projecting downward. The coloration of the body is dark gray, fading to white toward the underside with dark, mm-hmm. irregular blotches on the sides. They have a belly keel that extends from the vent to the base of the pelvic fins. They can grow up to nearly five feet in length and commonly reach 40 pounds, with some individuals reaching more than 100 pounds. And that is the truth. That's, that's I mean, true. There's, there's that big fish true. out there, for that, sure. That for is sure. true. That is true. Big Head Carp were introduced to southern United States in the 1970s to help aquaculture and wastewater treatment facilities keep retention ponds clean. The species begin, first began to appear in the Ohio and Mississippi rivers in the early 1980s, likely as a result of escaping during floods. And that's, isn't that just like the common yeah. theme with yep. that? Everything. We bring them in to help us with something, and right. next thing you know, bah, wow, right. what now? Right. What right. now? Mm-hmm. Just like with the, you know, the butterfly carp situation out in Idaho. Yep. People had ponds with koi carp in them. Yep. River floods. Boop. What happens they next? Escaped. Yeah. There you yeah. got them. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's, it's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Um, this is, what you're about to say next is, is pretty... Astonishing. Uh, it's actually scary. I'm looking at all this here, yeah. and I think I'd have a, a better time saying where they aren't, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yep. So, big head carp wild populations are established in the following states. All right? Yeah. Get ready for this. Alabama, Arkansas, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Nebraska, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Tennessee, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. Whew. Take a breath. That's a lot of states. <laughs> That's a lot of states. That's a lot of states. <laughs> Big head carp have also been reported in or stocked in the following states: Arizona, California, Colorado, Florida, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Virginia. Wow. I would honestly like to see a list of states where they are not yeah. at all. Because that would be crazy. a short list. Be a short list. And that's in a relatively short time frame it is. when they were first right. brought over here yeah. in those aquaculture and, and waste treatment ponds. Yeah, they began to appear, like you said, in the early 1980s. I mean, yeah, yeah that seems like a long time ago, but for for right. the evolution of fish movement, 40 right. years is not that long. Right. That's not that long of a time. And to really take over river systems and yeah. water bodies. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's that's that's, that's what invasive species do best is they yep. invade. Uh, big head carp eat blue-green algae zooplankton, and aquatic insects and larvae. How would you like to go have a meal of blue-green algae mm. tonight, Schmitty? Mm. I tell you what, sometimes that's what the uh, public school lunches <laughs> tasted like <laughs> at school in high school. But, uh, yeah, that doesn't sound real good. Um, you know, something else, you, you, I just sometimes I, I get reminded of all these little one-liners that you've said to me over the years. I remember you said when, on that first, that same first trip, you said, they look if you're looking out over the water and you, you see a white five-gallon bucket, Floating towards you. That's a that's a 
Big head. Right. Feeding. It's his mouth. Yeah, yeah. and that is what it looks like, yeah. too. It's, it's insane. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, the big head carp does not have a true stomach, yeah. so it must constantly eat. Isn't that's that, insane. Isn't that crazy? That's wild. Sometimes I think that's how I feel. Me too, same, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> that must be my problem. I don't have a true stomach. Yep. <laughs> it is awful. F- <laughs> <laughs> These big heads are getting you all riled up. It is also thought that big head carp will compete for food with fish that are still in the larval stage. And fish populations decrease because the larval fish do not get enough food to survive. Yeah, that makes total sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big head carp spawn when the water temperature is between 77 to 86 degrees. That's pretty warm. That's warm. Wow. Well, there's a lot of times when I'm down there in Kentucky in June, July, and that water temperature is way up there in the high 80s. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm crazy. just like compared to Buffs and Commons, you know, that's, right. that's a way warmer temperature. Right. Mm-hmm. Way warmer. Females spawn between April and June with the peak spawning season in late May. Mm. In rivers, spawning is triggered by a rise in water level following rains. The spawning period can extend from spring to late summer. The eggs are semi-buoyant and are deposited into the river channel. They hatch as they are carried along in the river current. Bighead carp are are not known to successfully spawn in ponds or lakes. Wow. So they need that buoyancy of those eggs. And it carries them down the river. It carries them. Yep. Wow, that's mm-hmm. that's wild. Yep. That just sounds invasive in itself. Is how yeah. those eggs are how that how those right. eggs are going to be hatched. They get taken down current, crazy? and they can't even do it in stagnant water. Right. That's yeah, yep. Wild. Yep. Yep. Uh, female big heads carry six hundred and sixty thousand to eight hundred and seventy two thousand eggs on average. As a female big big head carp gets older, they increase the number of eggs they can carry and spawn each year. That's crazy. That's six hundred and sixty. 660,000. Yeah, to 872. 872. And, and more and more as they get bigger. Yeah. That's crazy. Now, I'm going to read you off some some numbers here, Matt. And I'm going to be honest with you. When I first read these numbers, they they astounded me. Yeah. Okay, so I'm guessing that there's going to be some listeners out here who are going to be hearing these and go, holy cow, mm-hmm. that's insane. Yeah. All right? So I'm going to read you some state records. All right? Kentucky state record is 94.9 pounds, shot by Darren Tomlinson on May 12th. 2022, pretty recent. Pretty recent. Yep. A, that's a f- huge fish. Yep. Alabama state record is 98.6 pounds, shot by James Carroll on May 13th, 2021. Mm-hmm. Okay. Back to the Kentucky, Kentucky state record. It was shot by Darren on May 12th of 2022. <laughs> Alabama state record <laughs> by James Carroll, May 13th of 2021. One day and one year difference. That, that's, that's crazy. That's interesting. Yeah. Yep. 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 The Ohio State record is 92 pounds, shot by Tyler Skelton on September 11th, 2022. And the world record big head weighs 104.15 pounds, shot by William Barr of West Virginia on July 14th, 2020. Those, all those big fish are within the last four years. Yep. That's insane. These mm-hmm. big fish are popping up like crazy. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're thriving out there. They're thriving in those river systems. Mm. 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 Wow. And that's why they're so invasive. Oh, because yeah. What we said earlier is they have no stomachs, so they're constantly feeding. Right. And taking away all that fish food, you know, for the tiny native fish to grow. I know they did some studies down there on the Cumberland and Tennessee rivers and the Mm -hmm. tailwaters and the Ohio River of the spoonbill down there. Oh, sure. Yep. And how skinny the spoonbill were. Oh. They're just... So skinny. Because of the lack of food that the big heads are taking yes. away. They each feed in the same, yes. similar fashion. Yep. yep. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting stuff. That's that cool. Is, that is crazy stuff in the bow fishing world with our invasive big heads. Yeah. Yep. But I love them. Oh, me too. They're fun. <laughs> <laughs> they are so fun. So fun to go hunt. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. So now it's time for some sponsors ads, and then we'll get out on our phone call with Joe Nichols. Sounds good. Efficiency Bowfishing Lights by Outdoor Innovations USA. A color tone adjustable and dimmable light with a unique patented reflector design that puts more light where you need it. Efficiency Bowfishing Lights offer three different models. The 65 watt single color economy light, the 65 watt efficiency V2 tricolor dimmable light for maximum efficiency and versatility, and the 130 watt efficiency maximus, designed to be an all out beast of a bowfishing light. Efficiency. Designed and built by bow fishermen for bow fishermen. Check them out at OutdoorInnovationsUSA.com. Are you looking to elevate your bow fishing brand with stunning design solutions? Look no further than End Designs. 
Their team of talented designers is dedicated to bringing your vision to life. Whether it's t-shirts, hats, leather products, eye-catching logos, to captivating boat wraps, they have you covered. Plus, with their commitment to excellence and attention to detail, you can trust that your project is in good hands. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose end designs for extraordinary results. Visit their website today and let's bring your ideas to life. End designs, where creativity meets excellence. And welcome back to the Bow Fishing Buzz. All right, Schmitty, let's give Joe a jingle. Let's see what Joe has to say today. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Joe, this is Matthew and D. Schmitty from the Bow Fishing Buzz. How are you doing today? And thanks for joining us. Oh, man, I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Just working away. How are y'all? We are doing great. Just mm-hmm. uh, starting to get some nice weather rolling in here this weekend. So yeah. I think it's time to get the boat on and start shooting some fish. I agree with you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, I know when it starts, uh, start seeing those yellow tops and stuff grow, man, that was always. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a pretty, yeah. it's a pretty sight, isn't that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's, that's a trigger, man, for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. when I think of, yeah. when I think of yellow tops, I think of some very good footage of you shooting a very big fish. That's what I think of when I hear yellow. There's tops. a lot of big fish shot when a yellow top. That's come true. Up. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that's just, that's where my mind goes directly. So Joe, we've got a couple yeah. questions to ask, uh, ask you today. And, um, we'll just, you know, just have a little conversation with you. The first question for you uh, where do you live? When did you get into bow fishing? And who was that person that introduced you to the great sport of bow fishing? Well, I live in um, Vine Grove, Kentucky. Uh, it's near Fort Knox, south of Louisville. Um, I got into bow fishing in the early 2000s, okay. um, somewhere through 2001, 2002, 2003, somewhere around there. Um, and what happened was I, we had a little small group of buddies. We all hung out and stuff, and we deer hunted and just played around doing what, you know, young men do. And yep. then um, we uh, we took and my buddy took some guys, went with some guys from Texas. I believe they were military guys. And they took him fishing, and he loved it. So then, like, he worked in a in a – and like a hunting shop and stuff. So one day I show up in there and he's telling me about this. They went shooting fish, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> Oh really? Oh yeah. You know? So, so, uh, we right off the bat, you know, we're like trying to do everything that we can. Like I took and I took a, a Darton bow and a PSE bow and put it like built this Frankenstein bow <laughs> for, for it. And at the time he was telling me about all the slides and all that, you know, like, what the guys had, you know, yep. and here we were trying to make ours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's like the bow fishing thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So we were, you know, we were making ours. And of course, back in that time, man, it wasn't so easy where you just jump on your phone and Google something, and, you know, it, there it is, you know, yeah. AMS or whoever, you know? Right. So, uh, so man, we started, you know, we started going and stuff like that. And, uh, I mean, gradually eventually we you know we start figuring out where we could buy the actual equipment to do it right you know and then of mm-hmm. course they started carrying it and and i mean that's pretty much how it happened i mean he, a friend took some guys out or went out with some guys and then it went from there man that's like he got the bug yep. told me about it you know what i mean me and other friends and then of course it got to the point where you, you pretty much had to like pull a number because you know my buddy he ends up buying a big boat but then he's the boat's <laughs> full you know, and I'm like, nah, I can't do this. Like, I, I want to have my own boat, my own stuff, and rock and roll with it, you know. That, that's, that's pretty much how I thought it. Exactly, you know? and that's so, so true for so many people. Yeah. They go with the buddy. They go with some friends. They go with them for that year, and they're like, I need to get my own boat. Yeah, that, that passion spreads like wildfire. Yeah. Once you do it once, you're hooked, yep. you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No, it, yep. it does for sure. And you know, the thing is, is I, I've said it for years, it's like, I mean, I've taken people that don't hunt. They, I mean, they're not really even outdoorsmen, and I've taken them before, and they're like, oh, man, this is so awesome, you know, and then yeah. they're wanting to go again and stuff like that, you know. So, you know, I think it's just the action, and it's fun, and you get to, yep. you know, you get to hoop and holler and have fun. Right. Pick on your buddies and all that, you know what I mean? Yep, you don't oh, have yeah. to sit and be quiet and wait for just that one shot. Yep. Um, you know, you got yep. some, you can play some music. You, you're you're hooting and hollering, like I said. You're ribbing your buddies for missing a shot or missing a backup shot, and just just a good old time. <laughs> yeah, 
exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's how it all started, man. Gotcha. And I mean, of course, it, it, it went from there, snowballed, yeah. you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep, yep. So, Joe, where did you normally go bow fishing then? Were you shooting rivers? Were you shooting the, some of the lakes in the local area when you first kind of got going? Yeah, Ohio River was the okay. majority because it's like 15 minutes from my house. And, gotcha. You know, all of us where we live there, you know, so yep. that's where most of our bow fishing. And they got, they have, you know, a few man-made lakes around there, Rough River and Nova and stuff. We would fish those those areas. But, sure. you know, the first, you know, first few years, that's pretty much where we kind of stayed around our local area there. But at that time, to be honest with you, like, I mean, it was the land of the giants, you know, in our area. I mean, it's like if you went south, you know, if you went south on the river, they got smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's mm. like, you know, yeah. so we were very fortunate to um, to be all in them right here, you know. Right. It, it, <laughs> but, it, it's so funny that you just said that, Joel, because earlier when Derek and I were talking, I told him that area was called the land of the giants. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, I mean, yep. it, it, it really was. I mean, at, yeah. at one time, you know, yeah. like all the the Western Kentucky guys, you know, they were coming up this way, you know, to shoot the bigger fish. And then, you know, we'd have tournaments up this way and they'd come up here, you know, and then gradually, you know, as time changed and more silvers and stuff, yeah. you know, it's spread out now. Right, right. You know? and, and that's one thing that we're going to get into here in a couple more questions. And it's and that's what I really wanted to find out. So we'll get yeah. into that here in a couple right. more questions. But, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it'll be cool. It'll be really cool. Yeah. 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 So, no Joe, Joe, did you compete in bow fishing tournaments? And, and if you did, did you have a preference on what type of tournament it was, whether it was Big 30 or Big Fish or, or a numbers tournament? Uh, when I started out, I was I was a big, this big fish, you know. It yep. was, uh, I mean – we kind of lucked up and we were some of the first ones to get in shooting big heads and stuff, you know? So that sure. was like a, you know, I was just a, a adrenaline rush. And, um, so it was like, you know, I, it, it was, a, uh, yeah. I mean, I shot tournaments all the way up until just a few years ago, actually. Right, right. And, you know, I liked the big 20 format back then. Um, but we had mostly it was, big 10 you know what i mean and to me it was kind of like you know just shooting 10 fish and then yep. after that you're like culling you know what i mean yep. so mm-hmm. right like i always felt like the big 20 was like more fun to be honest with you you know so mm-hmm. but the big big fish format for sure and then probably i don't know probably about 2010 or so somewhere around there i just started shooting number tournaments sure and uh I think mean, it has to do with my ADHD, man. Like, <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I, I just want to keep shooting and shooting. And of course, like if you're, you're in a tournament or something, you don't want to be plucking away at little bitty fish and stuff. Cause yep. next thing you know that, you know, the stud, it was sitting right there in front of you and you right. shot and, <laughs> and blew him out, you know? So, yep. yep. but I think I just like the numbers for just the action part, part yes. of it you right. know, now, you know? So, but I still, enjoy shooting big fish sure i'm an equal opportunist man i like shooting them all you know <laughs> there you go, there you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah so joe now we're gonna get to the big head time um do you remember what year it was when you saw your first big head yeah it was like i'm just guessing man mm-hmm. uh 2002 2003 somewhere around there okay. and it was and it was actually by accident we were running a generator and that was with my the buddy I was talking about that, you know, got basically got us into it. Yep. And, um, it, on the bank and it just so happened that we were by this plant on the river at, uh, called Olin right there in Brandenburg. So we shoot this fish and of course they are weird, you know, freaky look, looks like their eyes, <laughs> they're not in the right place and everything <laughs> yeah. else. And we're like, what in the world? And, you know, so we, you know, and it was a good fish, you know, probably a 30, 35 pound fish, you know? So of course we, you know, that was our very first one wow. uh, that we ever shot like that. And, of mm-hmm. course, we continued doing the whole generator thing. And then another friend of ours had, um, kind of showed us how to do it. And I'm not sure how he knew with mm. the whole spotlight and stuff. Okay, yeah. But he, he showed us, and then, I mean, probably around the same time after, I'd say 2003, somewhere around there, maybe even earlier that's when we really got into where we started learning how to actually 
shoot them back then, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so, so that's really interesting. I'm assuming you're on the, you're on the Hall River, correct? Yes, sir. Yep. You're running the banks. You got your Jenny running, your big lights running. Boom. There's a big head on the bank. <laughs> you lay right. some and you're like, yep. holy cow, this is really cool. <laughs> This is neat. Yeah. We're going to see these fish all the time like this, probably thinking, or, or you know, you're probably thinking, this is cool. Yeah. We just found something. Yeah, up, up, to, up to that point, we we really hadn't, re- we, we really didn't know if we ever seen one before that. So mm-hmm. we actually shot one and put it in because we, you know, we kept it. And then the my buddy knew some biologist stuff. So he, okay. he had called and had someone come and confirm it. And then, you know, and then that's whenever. You know, and, but the funny thing is, we really thought it was like a mutant fish because it was by this plant. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> so we're like, so we're like, dude, I don't know, man. Like, we may have just shot something really weird. I mean, yeah. we were kind of even, you know, like, man, I don't, is this like, is this a legal fish to even shoot? You know what I mean? Yep, right, At the beginning, yep. so that's kind of, <laughs> it was just a weird. It was just a whole weird situation. I mean, we're all pumped because at that time, it was probably one of the bigger tweets I ever had shot at that point. Yeah, right, right. So, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's it cool. Was cool, you know. So, so, yeah. So, do you remember, um, like, what the biologist when he said when they found out what it was, or did he know what it was? Do you remember that at all, by chance? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. He he had told. Uh, yeah, he got the information from him and. I mean, at, at that time, it just seemed like it was, they were like very few and okay. far between. So right. I don't think it was like, you know, I don't think it was expressed on how, you know, how they're growing and how they're, you know, the population's growing at that point. Cause, you know, no one really even seen them at that point that much, you know? So I, he, but he did, you know, I mean, he's like telling us it's Asian carp and, okay. you know, and now, you know, at that time, we really, you know, and then it's kind of, I, I really feel like the big head name had come along as everyone was bow fishing, you know what I mean? Because yeah. it was just known as an Asian cart, you know? Okay. So mm-hmm. yep. sure. mm-hmm. yep. I don't think, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know for sure. I can't remember. I am getting older, but <laughs> you know, I don't know if the guy, I don't know if the biologist actually said that's a big head cart. You okay. know what I mean? So yep. that, he just said invasive, but, car- invasive carp. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. And, and probably at that time, they probably weren't really concerned, not knowing yeah. what you one, eventually could happen. One. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, well, at that time, you never even seen silver up here. Oh, wow. my gosh. That's crazy. That is crazy. I mean, very seldom, like you would go into a creek or something, you know, and oh. one would jump, you yeah. know, and I mean, but you could just see it, you know, over the years as we would go. And then once we, you know, start getting to the point, you know, I, I had gotten my boat. I got a boat right after, and then me and some other friends would start shooting, and then, you know, we wanted to get in the tournament and stuff like that. And, I mean, as everything was going on, you know, was, you were definitely, you could tell right off the bat, you know, anywhere there were silvers at, we wanted to get away because, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go shoot, mm-hmm. you know, any big, big heads, you know what right, I mean? And, right, and, right. Mm-hmm. You know, right. and at that time, the real big fish you would shoot would usually be by the balls. You know, it'd be just one big fish by itself. It wasn't sure. like a group of them. Wow. Yeah. You know, I, we were like, oh, yeah, they won't be around all them little fellows that's just, you know, right. little kamikaze things going all over the place. You know? Exactly. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know for me, yeah. I can remember the first time I saw a big head. I was down at um, Kentucky Dam, and they had the Campbell's Challenge going on down there. And I was down there with Cindy and Jeff to do some filming. Mm hmm. And I remember looking in those boats, and in their barrels oh, sure. were these giant mouths sticking up out of the barrels. I'm like, what in the <laughs> world? And like you said, it, it was like an alien or a yeah. mutant fish. Yeah, you know, yeah, that'd be a little crazy seeing that. It was. I, I was blown away. Yeah. And yeah. then I went back down there in 2008, and um, I went out with Dennis Redden. That's the first time I met Dennis Redden. And then 2008 was the first time I shot a big head. Sure. Yep. So it's crazy. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah. And Joe, you mentioned that you know you shot that fish with the generator running, the big lights on, um, and that's that's not the norm anymore. Can you just kind of walk us through for the listeners who don't know how you're targeting those fish now? Um, back then, we would just use a spotlight, like yep. we take the the spotlight you would use 
you know, just plug into your truck, cigarette lighter or whatever sure. else, and yep. uh, Q, you know, cubing. And that's what we use back then. Uh, and all you would basically do is, is, you know, your one guy is using the troll motor and one or two guys on each side of you. And then you would just pan from like the three o'clock to nine o'clock, <laughs> yeah. you know, depending on how, you know, and then of course, as we went on, you start figuring out it's like you shine out too far where you're blowing them up, wailing out and they're dropping out. And so you start to get to a point where, you know, like when I would do it, I would, I would and, and then where the edge of the light was at, once my boat got to there, that's when I would pan again, you know? So mm-hmm. you just kind of, you know, that's how it, it was done back then. Yeah. And then as time's gone on, you know, now, I mean, they, they had people were building towers and everything else to where you step on, you know, step on a foot yep. switch and light come on. And I, it seems like now, I think most of the people now are using a bow light, which is kind right. of convenient because you're already holding your bow. You know what I mean? Right. 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 And when you're panning, once you see one, man, it's a matter of pull back and shoot. But mm-hmm. they're really, they're light sensitive, you know, and um, to light at night. Yep. That's why it was just like a pan, click, turn off, you know, mm-hmm. pan, click, turn off. Right. Um, Otherwise they would spook. But, yeah. Yeah, they would spook, yeah. And, I mean, that back then, what the cool thing was, um, you know, we would get out there on the river, and as we went on, we started figuring out, you know, where they should be, you know. And it came down to where you're paying attention with, to the wind and stuff like that because the wind may have blown you know, scum and stuff up against the north side of the bank or something like that. Mm-hmm. So then you get in there and, that, you know, you may find them there right. or mouth of a creek or, you know, just it just all really depends how the weather was doing you know at that point really yep. so it, and yeah. it's, it's cool that you're as you're hunting these fish mm-hmm. you're also learning like you said wind blowing you know scum into certain areas nope. mouths of cricks and stuff like that you know that you're you you you've you shot your first one now you figured out we don't need to use a generator. Right. The lights that's spooking them. Yep. But we can't shine too far out in front of us because we're spooking them. That'll spook the ones them. that are out there further. Yep. So it's so cool that you're learning this whole process as the big heads, you know, eventually found their ways into those rivers on it. It's a neat process, yeah. I think. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. And you know that's the thing. I was <laughs> like, it, if it wouldn't have been for a friend of a friend, you know, telling us about the whole light, how to do that, we yeah. would have. You know, never known. But then after that, it's a matter of like I ended up talking to. I, I wish I could remember his name, but it was on Bow Fishing Country, and he was a biologist. And man, that guy would give me. I mean, he would show me all kinds. Of, I mean, send me graphs of like the feeding patterns of oh, wow. you know Asian carp, and you know he was showing me that in some cases, man, like in February, that would be they would be at a certain level, that, oh. like moving the most. Until, of course, you know, when the water starts to warm up, stuff like that, you know. So, wow, that's cool. you know, the stuff, he was way more high tech than what I am, <laughs> was, but, <laughs> and he knew, you know, I, I, I just wanted to shoot mm-hmm. heads and, mm-hmm. and I want to know as much as I can, you know. So, right, right. But it was, it was cool, man. That's awesome. So, so what was it like those first couple of years? Was there, was there a lot of big heads? Or like you said, just a few random ones here. You know, what was it like shooting in tournaments? Were you going back in and winning tournaments with these fish too? Yeah, I mean, it took it took a few years because I mean, you you would get into some, then you know, we were learning. You know, everyone yep. was learning as you go. So yep. you know, it's like we get into them one night, we go right back to that same spot and not see them, and then we're like, you can around a little bit, you know, right? And we're like, well, they're gone. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, eventually that's how it worked. I mean, we shot, uh, the friend that I got into it with, he really, they really didn't get into shooting tournaments. Um, I just have a competitive nature and I just wanted to compete. And sure. once I heard about the tournaments, that's where it started. And I mean, there was tournaments that I can remember everyone was, I mean, we're watching everyone run around us with generators and stuff lights on and uh and you know here we are just panning away out in the middle of the river you know (laughs) and uh then you come in and then like you know a lot of boats will have you know the river fish that we have here you know some buffalo and commons the grass carp here and there yep 
young and all of a sudden you had those things and me you know my my partner's always said man you got a big mouth don't say nothing but I, don't know. <laughs> I was just i just want i don't know man i'm just that way like i don't i want to compete like you know i want you and i to be in the same bathtub and yeah and knuckle it out so that's kind of the way it was for me because it, it was kind of getting to the point where you know they're like come on man what really we really can get that yeah you know, it's like you know so <laughs> And I mean, there would still be, I mean, there, and at that time, as it went on, I mean, it didn't take probably, I don't know, from, probably from, I, I would say, you know, after 2006, 2007, I mean, it was like, you know, spreading like wildfire then yeah. at that point, people getting it. But, sure. you know, we, the way we got into it and stuff, I think we, at that time, just had a little, edge possibly you absolutely know, you know I, it's I, like after that you know guys come in and they're like you know then they're shooting the same fish that we are you know and i mean right we, we had some big tens that was like you know mid 400s wow. there was one and there was close to, to you know 500 pounds and, you know it's close to like but you gotta think in the beginning like you shot bigger fish on average up here but there wasn't as many yeah you know then yep. as the more we got, the more the weight started dropping and the more silvers. So, I mean, you would, in the beginning, you may shoot, you know, three, four or something like that in a big 10, you know, and then uh, you, you, you're you on the banks trying to okay. get, you know, finish out because you're running out. Yeah. And then as it went on, people were figuring it out. Then it got to the point where you could shoot a big 10. Right. And it just went from there, moved up, you know. Yep. I, I can see, I can imagine what it was like back then. So you go to the tournament, you're sitting there getting ready for takeoff and all that stuff, and you're looking at, you're looking at all the other boats that are you're going to be competing against, and you're like, eh, they got generators and lights, they got generators and lights, they got generators and lights, we're going to beat all these guys. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have a clue what we're going to be up to tonight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah and, that's, you, and, you, and you're exactly right. That would be the thing. You already know a lot of them. That's how they're going to do. And, you know, like one of my best friends I shot with forever, you know, my – Adam Burton, you know, he shot mm-hmm. with uh, um, Neil, Neil Heerdink's dad, but he shot with him. So and it was always just them two. And, you know, and at first it was on a generator. And, of course, Adam, he shot since way back in the 90s. And, uh, you know, and they, you know, he would always like, so what's, you know, what's, what's going on? You know, I don't <laughs> think, you know. So, of course, me, I, you know, I tell him and then, you know, it's fine, especially like, you know, you go down somewhere, like, start going down to the tailwaters. And, I mean, I think back then I didn't realize it, of course, because, you know, Dennis and them, you know, they had the tailwaters stuff right there by them. Yep. And, uh, you know, and they were they were probably shooting them when we were, you know, at that time. So mm-hmm. it's just we wasn't really – everybody wasn't really getting around a whole lot. You know, we, right. everyone was doing a tournament or something kind of close and stuff, you know. So Yeah. That, that's cool. So, Joe, what were the average weights of those big heads back when you first started shooting them? Man, like, at one time, it almost felt like you never really shot a small one. I mean, it was like, yeah. if you shot something smaller than, like, 35 pounds, oh you're gosh. like, what's going on, you know? So Wow. Um, and then, like, I have, <laughs> I actually had found a, a picture album because I was trying to look and see exactly around the area whenever – the time I actually started shooting yep, and, uh, and, you know, on the back of a couple of them, I have it like the, you know, the weight of each one of them that's mm-hmm. been like, you know how it is when you start off, you know, you shot three fish where you're getting a picture of three fish with your stone cold killer face, you know? <laughs> yep. and, uh, oh yeah. And, uh, and then that, you know, looking back at that, I was like, you know, man, I can remember those times. It wasn't like it was a fish after fish, but man, they were studs, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It, but mm-hmm. 35, I mean, in, you know, 40 pounds, but the big, big ones that, you know, your kicker fish were, they were 50 pounds. Oh, wow. You know? oh. Yeah, they're so, good fish. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. that, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's definitely, you know, and I'll kind of go into it here in a little bit, but it, yeah, it's like you would have some nights that are like, you know, later on in time, I figured, you know, we figured out why, why that, you know, mm-hmm. why the fish were doing what they were, why you're shooting the big, big ones at sure. the time and stuff like that, you know? Sure. So, 
So, so what's the biggest one that you've ever shot, Joel? 70 pounds. 70 pounds. Wow. Mm, yeah, it was officially weighed. So it was 69 and some change, and mm-hmm. I didn't weigh it until the next day at like noon. Oh. And it was really, really, really hot. And, uh, and it was just me and another buddy that went, and uh, we were actually doing some filming. Hmm. And um, so we were kind of taking turns filming and stuff, and we uh, we got up on the banks, man. We start hearing them, you know, dust on the banks. So we get over on the banks, and there was like two little ledges, a step up on the river bank, and um, so we just kind of stayed out. And as we're going, and then we just started panning straight off the bank. And man, they were just staged up there. And at that time, you know, we didn't realize that the water temperature, you know, was getting just right for the spawn and oh, stuff. Wow. And then, you know, that's they were just stacking up. And mm-hmm. I mean, that night there, we had shot like it was a work night for one. <laughs> we shot like five fish. All five of them were over fifty pounds. Oh. And then that one, like when I picked it up, like I could, like I knew that it was yeah. the biggest fish yeah. I had ever shot. You Absolutely. know, absolutely. Wow. And um. You know, it was it was definitely cool. I mean, it was a time that I remember because at that time, that was the biggest fish I ever shot out of anything. Yeah. You know, right? So right. that's cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a story here, Joe, and and let me know if you remember any of this. Um, okay. I came down there in that area in 2010 to shoot in the Downriver Bow Fishing Association tournament on the Ohio River, and um, I was shooting with Chris Lee and Jason Greer. And the reason... Oh, I already know where you're going. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the, I, I won't forget that. <laughs> yeah. The reason I was down there is because I was looking for a location to host our first annual AMS Big 20. And I had right. three spots located out, and that this was one ch- spot that I went to look out to shoot in a tournament to check it out. And so um, we went out that night, and we shot in a tournament, and... I'll never forget this. Um, we were up there weighing our fish, and uh, you were coming in next to weighing your fish, or you were sitting out there in your boat. And I said, hey, Joe, I says, give me a thumbs up. I want to get a picture. <laughs> and you, you kind of gave me a thumbs up, but there was no thumb. <laughs> I'm like, come on, come on, give me a thumbs up. I can't see it. You did it again. And yeah. I'm like, Joe, <laughs> give me a thumbs up, man. <laughs> Cause this, it was the sunset was bad and it was just a really the, the sky was all pink. It was early in the morning, and I'm like, "Give me a thumbs up in your boat." And he said, "I can't, man. I don't have a thumb." <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! What a way to find that out. Good yeah. Lord. I was like, "Oh, uh, I'm bad. sorry, Joe. <laughs> my bad." Uh, no, and at that time, I kind of figured it too because it's like no, you're getting the nubs up, not the thumbs up. So. <laughs> nubs <laughs> right? up. That's a perfect wall. That's amazing. Nubs oh, up. that was so funny. And yeah, then that it, that same tournament's the one that we had found the same spot and we, you know, we thought, man, we're going to take a drive and, you know, we're going to sit down on these fish and have an awesome night. And yeah. then we're passing boats up, <laughs> passing boats up. And I looked behind, I was like, who's that coming on? And I'm looking, I'm looking. And I, here, here y'all go by. And we're like literally right around the corner from yeah. the spot. <laughs> and you all come around past us right up and go and sit down exactly on the spot. Oh, oh man. man. I, had a, I had a sick feeling. I'm like, oh, no, man. <laughs> like, I thought we had it locked down. We didn't see anybody, and we hung out, and, you know, we chilled and just to see if anyone else would show up in that area. And we thought, man, we had extra gas and <laughs> yeah. the whole nine yards. Yep. yep. And then uh, – and here y'all come zinging by us. <laughs> oh, man. I, and that was a long drive, wasn't it, Joe? That was a long drive oh, to that yeah. spot. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah. Because it wasn't For a trailering sure. tournament. You had to all leave from the same oh, tra- same okay. boat landing. Sure. And right. it was a long run up river. And Jason Greer goes, we're going to have boats take off way in front of us. He said, but I got a fast boat. <laughs> oh, wow. And he wasn't yeah. kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a cool thing yeah. to say. <laughs> yeah, man. And it, they did. They just kind of slow rolled right on. Like, mm-hmm. you know, Yep. it's always like, uh, I, I do think about that because it made me sick. So I literally <laughs> thought, you know, we, I'm like, yeah, we got, we got this, we got some good fish here. They're going to hang out. 
you know, we yeah. sat on them. A little yeah. bit later, we went and checked on them. They're still there. I'm like, okay, we're good. Let's go. <laughs> it was a good spot. Little. And in comes <laughs> Yeah, it was. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Oh man, it was a good spot. Because <laughs> we thought we had it, we thought we had it made in the bag. Because we scouted that Friday night, and man, there was fish everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just a good spot. It was a bend in the river, and it was just awesome. And we didn't see anybody. We didn't see anybody up there Friday night. So we're like, huh. and you know, there's a, we're like looking at that boat in front of us, like Jason, you got to pass that boat. I didn't know who it was, you know. <laughs> I'm like, you got to pass that boat because that's like the last one. All the other ones kind of veered sure. off and went to yep. their spots, you know? Yep. I'm like, that boat's going to where we're going. You got to catch them. Wow. <laughs> what are the odds of that? I think. Lord. Yeah. It, correct it, me if I'm. Definitely. Is this correct? Didn't Jason Greer, he had a fiberglass boat. Yeah. And it had a modified V on it so he could cut waves. Really? Really oh, good wow. with that thing. And we were just flying up the river. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, he's right. That boat, it, it would definitely roll out. I yeah. Mean, it was, yep. you know, I, I think at that time, I think I had a, it was like a 74 stroke, mm-hmm. you know, Suzuki, and, you know, it was quiet and all, but it didn't have no speed on it. I'll but, tell you what slowed you down by three miles an hour, Joe. What's that? It was that fan you had on the back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you might be right. Yeah. <laughs> you might be right. <laughs> we didn't have a fan on the back, and you were being dragged down by that fan sticking Zip up above right you guys. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, that tournament for us, that tournament for us, like, just went downhill from there because, yep. of course, we leave that spot, and we're going back to some spots where we did see fish. Fish aren't there. Someone's sitting there. And then, at the time, my wife, and Josh's wife was shooting with a shot. Yes, that's right. Yes. And they were, and they were like, they basically hung out right there, like or not far from where we took off. Mm-hmm. And then they're sending enough pictures of them shooting some <laughs> decent fish. So, so, and as, and the more it goes along, the more it's like, all right, let's go try this spot. Ah, you run, you get to there, like, ah, oh, am I sitting there? You know? And then <laughs> yeah. we're getting these text messages and everything else of, you know, them shooting fish. And Josh is like, you know, he's like, I, I, I don't even want to hear it anymore. You know, and I'm like, I don't want to either. I'm ready to, I'm ready to load up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that was just, that was just fun times, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. Uh, that's cool. I, I love those times, yeah, man. That's that like the fun. most favorite thing to me about bow fishing. Right, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. So, Joel, let's let's fast forward to present day. Um, we've been talking about big heads this podcast, but what's your favorite fish to target now? I think I know it's going to be. I think I know, but I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Wait, whisper to me before he answers. Whisper to me off camera. Off camera? Okay. Okay. All right. All he right. just told me what he thinks it is. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, small gar. Oh, <laughs> man. I was way off. Small yeah, gar. Small yep. gar. Small gar. Yeah. Now, I mean... I, there's, I, I don't know what it is because it's like hit and miss, but I like shooting the grass carp. Oh, the, there it like, is. There it is. That's that what was, I said. That's that what was I was mentioned it guess. There. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We, we've had some pretty, like, I mean, we've had some nights where we, like any tournament, well, any tournament back then, you know what I mean? But you, we would have dominated on, you know, so, and those nights are super fun. And you're like in a lot of action, you know, but yep. yeah, I just like, I, and I'm just still that way, man. Like I'll be 50 this year and I don't feel old. I mean, I got, you know, I had a, I had an accident in 22 and I, I have like a daily, I have a, every, a headache every single day. Oh. And, oh. you know, but like I went and, you know, go get a checkup and stuff. And they're like, well, dude, you're healthy as a horse. I mean, you're not, you know, yeah. you don't seem like you're 50 years old. And like, I'm, I'm not 50, I'm 49. Yep. So, <laughs> yep. but, but I would still, but I would still like, I mean, I, I'm not lying to you. Like if we're going somewhere and, and you know, we, there's a bunch of little dink gars stacked up around some lights on a barge or something like that. Like if I was able to walk on water, I'd be like, here, drop me off here. And I'll, you all roll on. I'm going to shoot these, you know? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, it's a constant but, shooting and action. I, yeah. Yeah, and that's all it is for me. It's yeah. just the shooting part of it. You know, I mean, I, it, it, I just like to shoot and, mm-hmm. you know, bowfish. You know what I mean? That's what I like to do. Right. But right. But, but the little gar, man, I do. I enjoy them. And then the, the grass carp would be 
right there. Yeah. <laughs> I know you, I know I always seen, you know, years ago, I remember on, you know, on, on Facebook and stuff, you always were holding up some big grass carpet. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, yeah. look at that big old grassy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I got a, I got a picture of, um, I'll send it to y'all here in a little bit. Uh, we went one night and my buddy Adam, or another Adam, <laughs> he had shot a, he had, he actually shot the state record grass carp that night. Oh, oh wow. And it was, that's man, like they were, and they were all big <laughs> and they were all in one spot, you know? Wow. And then wow. that night there, man, there was the night where, you know, up until recently, it didn't matter, you know, where, he, well, unless you went to Louisiana and shot big gator gar, but you know, you're looking at, I always project it to shoot a 25 pound average and that usually puts you in the money. Right. You know, yep. so, yep. Mm-hmm. but yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, that, that's my favorite. Wow. You know, when I'm you say, you know, what's crazy is we're talking about big heads and you, you're talking about, you know, 25 pound average will usually get you in the money in tournaments, but man, man, Joe, nowadays, these these big head hunters are rolling in with you know forty fifty pound averages nowadays. Oh, I know. Oh my I gosh, know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's definitely it's crazy, man. Because I mean, even back in the good days, it was just hard to find you know those kind of fish. So, right. and I mean, I don't, you know, I, me, I, you know, I, I'm always like, you know, it's either has to be an, an area or you know equipment, you know, the way that I think. But then again. You know, when we started off and we were doing it, I mean, where we were, we were doing a de- different technique. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now, like, you know, like Lance and them, man, they got it. Whatever they're doing, and I'm not saying, by no means saying anything shady, but I'm saying, like, you know, whatever they're doing as far as they they learn it, they probably should even keep their mouth shut mm-hmm. <laughs> if, mm-hmm. if they want to keep going on with it, you know, because uh, yep. that's difficult to do, you know. Um, yep. No one's done it until the previous years, so it's definitely something that's awesome. Right that, now, that would probably be a fun night. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> I was up with Lance the last couple of years. When I get down to the Jared yeah. Ashmore, I'll go with Lance. You know, one night. Yeah. Or, or, and, yeah. and stuff, and and we're sitting talking, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it's boring. <laughs> 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 it's boring, Joe. I mean, I, I shot that one fish at you know, like four thirty in the morning. The other fish I shot like at three thirty in the morning, and yeah. and that was the only fish that I shot yeah, that, that got, night. Got on the water at what time? Well, one time we had to wait because of storms and stuff. But you know, at ten o'clock at night. Damn, man, man, yeah, that was a long night. Yeah, that's a long night. Mm. You know, and, yeah, and, and that's, that's, that time it's almost not dark until <laughs> right, right. And I remember. <laughs> Lance telling me the amount of hours and nights that he has put in scouting and trying to figure out fish is just mind boggling. Blow you away. The guy's eyes are bloodshot 24 7, 365. <laughs> He's got a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> he does. Well, them, you know, them guys and then like, uh, he's scaling them, man. I mean, them, you know, those, they're the same way. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. they've got it figured out. I mean, you know, I've seen, I mean, I've put on tournaments, you know, where right. everyone's thinking the big heads are going to do it. The big heads wasn't up, and here they come in with, you know, an awesome, you know, yep. stringer of buffalo. You yes. know what I mean? Yep. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, but it does. It takes a lot of work, man. Yes. I, and I, you know, that's, I think, for one, a lot of people take it for granted, the fact that, you know, we live in an area where they're, that's a target fish for right. tournaments and so on. So, and, and we take it for granted that, you know, we know things or, you know, I mean, I definitely think it's evolved and changed since I was doing it hardcore yeah. for yep. sure. Yep. You know, and, uh, and, but sometimes people take it for granted. I mean, you got to think, man, there's like, you know, there's no big heads down in Louisiana. You know what I mean? No one's, no one's out on the water down there running with the spotlight and stuff, you mm-hmm. know, so. Mm-hmm. You know, your time on the water is very valuable, you know, so. Exactly. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, Joe, talking about tournaments, um, you used to host a variety of tournaments. You hosted world's tournaments. You hosted a lot of tournaments in your area down there for for several years. Um, you know, mm-hmm. what was that like for you when you were, you know, doing all that stuff? I mean, you had to be busy as heck and and dealing with issues and all that stuff. But, man, you every year you were hosting tournaments and putting on worlds and all that stuff, Joe. 
Yeah, it was fun, man. I think that, you know, now I look at it and I'm like, that was definitely my ADHD. <laughs> you know, because you know, everyone's like, you're shooting it too? I'm like, yeah, I'm shooting it too. You yeah. know, it's like, you know, but it was always fun. I love putting on tournaments. Um, mm-hmm. I have full intentions on uh, getting back into shooting fish yep. soon. And yep. if I do that, you know, I like to talk to the guys that, took over like the tough man tournament, man. I, you know, I put that tournament on for years. And, yeah. You know, yep. I wouldn't mind seeing if some guys would let me, you know, get with them on that and run it again or something. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't do it. I mean, I did, I had a, I had fun doing it on the, on the, you know, it was kind of stressful because yep. Yep. It, you know how on anything, the bigger the group, I mean, you can't make everyone happy and then right. we're, we're human. We all have different opinions. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then on top of that, you know, it's like, People, you know, have accidents or, right. you know, things like that. And they're calling me and like, hey, man, we're stuck or, you know, so it's yep. mm-hmm. that part of it and being like a tournament director. Now, the thing is, is I really didn't spend a whole lot of time. I had a small group of companies that, you know, that would always donate, yep. you know, and I, but today, I mean, like with these auctions and everything else that have these awesome payouts, I mean, I commend them. Right. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't have the time to do all that, yeah. you know what I mean? So. Uh, that's, I mean, I think that's awesome, and they do probably three times the amount of work that I did when I put on these tournaments, you know. Yeah. So and social uh, media has made it a lot easier, mm-hmm. also, Joe. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, it it, it has, and I mean, mm-hmm. I I had the benefit, I had the benefit of, of that, you know. I mean, we we always had decent turnouts unless the weather right. was crap, you know. Right. And right. Uh, you know, I mean, I enjoyed, you know, I, I did state shoot and. Uh, the world, and mm-hmm. I did that uh, madness shoot for the wildlife and fisheries, and okay, yep, you know, yep, it was like, you know, I, I enjoyed it, but yep. I, it's it's just part of doing that. <laughs> it's just part of putting on tournaments, yep, you know. Yep, because I remember so, you hosted. I think it was a 2016 Worlds down there in Kentucky, and there was almost 80 boats at that tournament. Mm-hmm. Oh, big tournament, yeah, 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 and it was. Yeah, and I mean, I sit back now and I think, man, you know, like, if I'd have done legwork like what these guys are doing now, as far as getting me, you know, the, the added money, yeah. you know, I'm thinking back then we could have had well over 100, you know, boats then, you know. Right, right. So, and I think John right, Alaska but, actually started that when he hosted oh, the really? Worlds in Minnesota that year. That's when he started out doing those auctions and stuff. Sure. Pop up auctions, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it, I don't know if John was running pop up auctions, but he was doing some type of auctions for like guided trips and and boat fishing trips and duck trips and and stuff like that. And yeah. that money would go towards the the payout. Sure. And so John Alaska started that. He had it, you know. He was the first one to come up with that idea. Hey, let's start raising some money. Yeah, smart. You know, well, yeah. it was a great idea, man. It was, <laughs> and it hasn't stopped since. Yeah, yeah and it hasn't mm-hmm. stopped since. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the other thing I think too is, you know, we got to thank the individuals that are participating in that. To, right. You know, if someone's taking someone else to guide, I mean, they're doing that on their dime and their time. So, right. You know, yep. But, you know, everybody can't overlook that part because without them, it wouldn't happen, you know? Exactly. So, sure. Mm-hmm. sure. Well, Joe, we better let you get back to work because I know you're taking time off of work to talk to us right now. And I'm sure your boss yeah, is probably wondering good. where the heck you are. <laughs> oh no, I'm sitting, I'm sitting in I'm good right now. I'm sitting in my office. So. Oh okay, uh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I'm hiding out, but uh, yeah, good man, deal. that's cool. I, I, I enjoyed talking. With yeah, you guys. man, thanks yeah. for thanks for joining us. You know, and, and talking about your early days shooting those big heads and stuff like that. And and um, like I said, you've done a lot for the sport. Um, you you hosted a lot of tournaments. Um, you were always at other tournaments competing right there. And, and, um, that's how I met you was shooting in tournaments and, uh, you're a great guy. You're, you're fun to shoot with. I know you, you came and you shot in the the tournaments that we used to hold up there in Brandenburg with the AMS big thirties back then and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, it was great to have you on today, Joe. Really appreciate you coming on here. I appreciate it, Joe. Well, I think, uh, man, heck maybe, maybe I'll, uh, run into y'all in the water. That's right. That's right. If you ever see us, you stop by and you give me a big old thumbs up, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, Will. You know, Will. So I'll be hitting you up for some cheese curd. There so, you go. Yeah, go. There you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, All right, Joel. Well, you take care and thanks, buddy. 
All right, man. You all too, man. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> That's funny. A little bit yeah. of insight in uh, Joe Nichols there, and that that big head history actually is very interesting. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Yep. yep. And to think that he actually thought that he was shooting like a nuclear radioactive power fish plant by freak. the power plant. Yeah, yeah that's the power actually plant freak. That's funny that that was his first instinct, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty that's cool. cool stuff. And and I know Joel kind of got out of bow fishing here a little bit within the last couple of years and stuff like that there, but. Um, he does still miss it, like he just said, oh, right yeah. there and wants to get back out there because yeah. he was at a lot of tournaments. He was he mm-hmm. was doing a lot of stuff for bow yeah. fishing, you know, yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a note on our notes here, Matt. A note on our notes. A note uh, on our notes. It's got me a little excited here. It says, going out this week, question mark? I'm what does that entail? To, I've, I've got, um, we have, we're getting our, our new, our light brackets laser cut right now. Yes. They should be done tomorrow. For the new efficiencies. The V2s yep. are going on. Yep. And I want to get on the water with those and go shoot some fish this weekend because it's supposed to warm up. Mm-hmm. It'll be a beautiful weekend. Yeah. Yep. It's supposed to be nice out. So yeah. it's time to get out, shoot yeah. some fish. Heck yeah. Good deal. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good We're deal. looking for that. And then also, Schmitty, Yeah. next Monday. Next week, Monday. Carbon TV. Season 3, Episode 2. Common fun. Mm-hmm. That was a fun day. Yep. Fun Old couple days. D. Schmitty and I do some common action right here in the state of Wisconsin. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All kinds of good stuff That's in coming that one. out on Monday. Yeah. Yep. Monday, that was, I can't wait for a day. April like 15th. That. Yep. Yeah. April 15th. Mm-hmm. I can't believe it's next week, Monday, we're halfway through April. That's hard yeah. to believe. Yeah. That's wild. Wild. That's good. Well, we hope you enjoyed episode 78. Yeah. Yep. The Bow Fishing Buzz. Old Joe Nichols. Yep. Presented by AMS Bow Fishing and Mega Mouth Bow Fishing as well. And Designs. Efficiency Lights sponsoring. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We hope you're having a great time on the water right now. Doing some bow fishing. Enjoying the awesome sport of bow fishing. And remember, know what you're going to do with your fish before you go bow yes. fishing. Good reminder. Yep, absolutely. Just had a post this week for Wisconsin. Somebody... Threw a bunch of fish in a ditch. I saw that. Yes. Oh, darn it. Stop it. Yep. Or don't go bow fishing. Yep. Exactly. We don't need that. Exactly. We don't need that in our sport. Bad apples. Yes. So from all of us here at Aim Miss Bow Fishing, we wish you the best of luck. Remember, aim low. Think big. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> <laughs>